Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials. All the info, none of the fluff. So let's get to it. We got another community question about MIDI editing today from Pete. I would love to figure out a way to edit multiple tracks superimposed at one time. I've been doing a lot of string quartet and piano work and would like to be able to line up notes in one view. So yes, I'll show you how to do that. A few things before we start. There's this setting called one MIDI editor per, and you can set to have one MIDI editor per media item, track, or project. Now, some people think that that is the solution. So if I set this on a project basis, I will just be able to edit all my tracks at the same time. But it just means that when I double click on a new item, I get that item opened right here where it used to be. So if I go back here, I set this to a per track basis. You can see that right now we're seeing this item on this track. And if I double click, I'll open a new tab. So if you want, you can open tabs. And then for example, in this track where I have two items, it would still open the new item in the same dock. But if I choose a new track, new track will be in a new tab. If I set it per item, then everything that I double click on will, will create its own MIDI editing window. When you set your MIDI editor to per project, then you find a nice place for it in your screen set, and it will always look like this when you're MIDI editing, which is how I like it. We're still not seeing all the tracks superimposed at one time, but in your default MIDI toolbar, if you haven't changed it, you got this thing called track list, and once you hit it, you get this track list. Now from here, I can actually do what you want to do. So right now we're seeing my Rhodes track. So let's say I want to see my lead synth track superimposed. Hit the I, and now as you can see, my lead is there. I can also switch to it. These are the notes from it. I got to zoom in for you to see those are shorter notes then if i want i can also see my arp track and then i can switch to it and then my arp track as you can see has two items so i can also switch between these two items if i want so item one item two and again you know if if things get too cluttered for you you can always turn those invisible and you can click and drag which is nice if i press alt and click on one of these it will make it exclusively visible you know if i want to work on my lead i can work on my lead i can also alt click on it just to see it like this and then whenever I want I can see any other track I want to see and I think makes it quite easy to navigate your project so that's one way of doing it another way of doing it this would depend on whatever software instrument you use but for example I got my string quartets here and if we open it it's the play app which is for east west I have four instruments loaded my basses my celli my violas and my second violins and they're receiving from channels one to four on my midi editor so let's hide my track here and let's open it like this now what I can do on the bottom of my MIDI editor, I can come here, I can color my events based on certain things like velocity, channel, pitch, source, etc. So right now I have set it to color them by channel. These are my bases, which go to channel one, and these are my celli, which take from channel two. I also have this MIDI toolbar here, is this list of commands. Set channels for new events to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to 16. So for example, my violas are on track three. So all I gotta do is click here and then I can write whatever I want. So then I want to write some second violins. I click on four and I come here and I just do whatever. So I like this system better for string quartets and stuff. Just setting these to whatever channel that their instrument corresponds to. And then you have one MIDI editor. There is a problem with this approach as well. Namely, my MIDI keyboard is pretty basic. So on more sophisticated MIDI keyboards, you can totally set like different channel sends per octave and stuff like that. But on mine, you can't. So you got to constantly like change the channel if I want to. This is not how I really work when I'm when I'm writing for string quartets. What I want to do is I want to play a chord and just hear that chord, right? Right, I wanna, I wanna hear all my chords, right? So another thing you can do is that you can remain an Omni, write in one MIDI item, create any kind of chord I want. And then after I'm done with my composition, I can come here and I can set the channels for them after I'm done. So for example, these two lines are bases, so I can go control one and their channel will be set to channel one. I can go control two for anything that's going to the celli. I can set this to viola. I can set this to second violins. I can set this to first violins and so on. And those are these commands. I think control 1 to 9 are set already. And then channel 10 is 0. And then channels 11 to 16, I set to QWERTY. So, you know, 1 to 10 on my QWERTY numbers. And then QWERTY themselves for uh, 10 to 16. There's also set event channel higher with control and P. Or you can go set event channel lower with control and semicolon. So, you know, I write my chords. I voice them out. Once I'm done, once the composition is finished, 
I can go and set these ranges how I want them in my MIDI editor. So to review, you can use the track view and switch between the tracks easily. You can also see whatever else you want to see on the same channel, or you can do it via your software instrument if it has that capability, like play does or contact does or what have you, and then write in one MIDI item and then send them to different channels. Of course, there's also the notation editor. You can do a huge number of things like have all your instruments here and you know just edit them like you would in Sibelius or whatever. So that's another way as well that definitely deserves its own video. So I think this is good for now. So that's it for today's video. I just had a few announcements to make today, which is why this video will be a little longer. First of all, a huge thanks to all the people who've subscribed and watched the videos and commented uh, in these first few months of my channel. You know, your support means a lot to me and keeps me going. Uh, I also hope you've liked the video so far. We've done about five videos a week for about eight weeks now. And the frequency is gonna have to go down a little bit moving forward because I kind of took the opportunity at a time where I didn't have a job to, to do all these videos. And now I'm starting to get a few jobs. So I need to focus on those and make fewer videos. That said, our weekly series will all keep going. The sound design videos will still be every Wednesday. Rapid Fire Reaper tutorials will take a little bit of a hit. We will go down from four videos a week to only two videos a week. And I will try to do those Monday and Friday. So yeah, so the frequency will go down, but hopefully the quality will go up first of all. And also I want to create some more of the supplementary material that I've promised over the course of these tutorials. Like I want to put all the MIDI tutorials kind of in one blog post with all the custom actions, all my toolbars, all those things for you available to download and all the scales as I said in yesterday's video. I want to create some quizzes, some things like that. Uh, hopefully I get to still do this channel while kind of, you know, keeping my hands as many cookie jars as I can with my album and stuff like that. So thank you for watching so far and bear with me. Have a good Black Friday. I'm not buying anything this year. Way too broke. I think we all took a hit from COVID. So no plugins for me. I've, you know, I've been buying plugins for about 10 Black Fridays now. So, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm good. Buy Reaper. You know, if you haven't bought Reaper yet, go donate to some of the people who write these amazing scripts. Today, I donated to MPL and I intend to donate to some other folks as well. When you use Reaper, every day is Black Friday because $60 or $220 is nothing. All right. Take care of yourselves. Have a good weekend and I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.